see so. Oh, it's fabulous! A strike to get you up off your seat! Hello, welcome to Seagull Social Season 4, Episode 24, and it's a good episode because we are through to the next round of the FA Cup, Ben, after a, a great win against Stoke City. The Andy the Naylor the derby, cup. unfortunately, Andy. Yeah. The magic of the <laughs> cup. Andy Naylor's on the wrong end of it this time. But, um, well, <laughs> uh, Ben, I'm joined by you. Not joined by Maz because it's his mother's birthday, so wishing her yeah. a very happy birthday, of course, from Some everyone excuse in the that. Albion Some community. Excuse. Um, it's awful in it's so poor. But yeah, Ben, um, <laughs> how are you, mate? I can't talk, though. Um, how am I? Yeah, good. If if you are watching on YouTube, um, you'll notice I'm in a new setup. Um, I moved out. Get what? the violins out, guys. That's mad. Do you know what? It's actually uh, yeah. quite emotional. Like, you know, it's the last last pod last time that you ever filmed in that setup. It's been iconic yeah. for about three years, that is. I mean, for, for the viewers, yeah, it's going to be quite an emotional one to look back on now. And for me as well, it was a tough one. But, you know, I still managed to bring the David Lopez shirt. Still got the the sign up there, which is like one of three, I think, probably because just no one else bought it, not because it's exclusive or anything, um, or limited edition. Um, what else have we got around? There is a Brighton thing up here, but because the, we're, there's only two of us, you can only see us narrowly. So and hopefully when there's three of us, you'll be able to see another like stadium poster up there as well. I tried my best. Oh, there was yeah. a flag. It's just fallen from the TV as well. So that's not <laughs> ideal, but yeah, it's I like made the it. Goldbridge moment, that mate. <laughs> the setup. Let me see if I can do it whilst you talk. Okay, this is this is going to be good fun. Um, yeah, so Brighton obviously won today. Um, <laughs> it's it's a rare moment where I've not been at the game. Actually, it's quite weird to be honest, but um, it's a good win nonetheless. I mean, it's a it's a game. I I, I can't even say Ben because he's still doing this, but it's a game Ben as to where we've probably not started at our best and and in all honesty it was a bit of a tough start I mean Stoke came at us quite well in the beginning of the second then in the beginning of the first half um and they were they were there to prove that they're not there to be messed around with I mean um that first goal where uh, that mistake sort of by a bit of everyone really I think Lewis Dunk passed it out um sort of Jao Pedro is shaken off it quite easily the next three ball comes across and then all of a sudden JP in maybe not one of his more fashionable moments. I mean, he's, he's been so good for us, Ben, but that was not one that he's going to try and remember for too long. No, but he did set the precedent of defenders scoring for Brighton in that game, which was good because Van Heck scored. And as opinion, I thought, oh, I'll probably need to score now as well as a defender. And Lewis Dunk followed suit. So it was only Jack Hinchwood who should hang his head in True. shame for not scoring as a defender because that would have been quite a good bet. Um, but no, yeah, it was probably... Would... Absolutely useless. <laughs> Absolutely useless. Get him out of the team. Bring back Lamptey with one leg. We'll we'll be fine with him. Uh, but no, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't the best moment for JP, was it? But um, he made up for it later in the game, which I'm sure we'll get onto. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's not one that I'm going to stick around on, to be fair, because we did we did come back. I mean, it wasn't. I wouldn't say we were bad by any stretch, but I wouldn't say that we were very good either. I think we were just a bit. We'd almost lowered ourselves to the the classic standards of Stoke away when they're sat sort of bottom end of the championship. It really felt like that in that first sort of 45. Uh, I think Stoke, if anyone really deserved to be in the lead, sort of going into half time, I thought they had a couple of chances. Um, that big Wesley, is he the same Wesley that was at Villa that sent yeah, forward? Yeah, it is him. Yeah. It is him, isn't it? Like he's quite, he's quite handy, you know. To be fair, he, mm. he had us on strings a couple of times. Van Hicker and Dunk looked like they had never played football together at times, but um, we did move can on. Right? Can just, you imagine if we didn't thanks... play like a straw th- uh, full strength team? Because I was found that quite surprising that Deserby said before mm. the game, "It's like we're going to go full strength." Usually, you use the FA Cup, even if it is against a Championship team, to put some more rotation in the squad or the starting eleven. But he didn't, so. What would the result have been if we did have a slightly more rotated team? Would we have actually won that result? No, won, won that game, sorry. Yeah, I mean, it, it's difficult though, isn't it? Because our, you know, the game changes then, doesn't it? The game's different, and I don't know. It's it's hard to tell. But I think our, our, I don't know. Deserby likes to obviously go for everything, doesn't he? He wants to win every competition that's available. So I, 
I'm not surprised really that he went for a first eleven. I mean, let us know in the comments, obviously, if you're surprised. But I don't know. There's something about Italian managers; they want to just win everything, especially someone like Deserbi. But I don't know, Ben. I thought that first eleven was as good as it can get. I don't know about you, but that first half was sort of far from pleasing, was it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So that's pretty much credit to to Stoke, to be fair. Um, it was really nice for their 200 fans to see them take the lead against the mighty Brighton of Albion because that was an abysmal, abysmal attendance from them. Let's be honest. I think it was more Brighton away fans. But um, yeah, they they probably wish they did buy tickets because their team what didn't do too bad. Um, and yeah, probably maybe you could say they deserved more from the first half. They could have scored more potentially, but um, yeah, no, they they done themselves proud. I would say they weren't the, the classic Stoke that we used to remember and love with the Peter Crouch balls up to the top they do play a bit better football now but they used to be good are. back in the day you know good they did the yeah day. it's actually quite interesting I was listening to the Peter Crouch podcast recently and he was talking about how he was talking about the transition from the Stoke City with Charlie Adam to getting Ibrahim Afalai Bowie and all that stuff he said the reason why they got relegated is because they the balance was really good at one point and then it just tipped up tipped too far to the whole Tiki Taka style of play or that yeah that sort of style of play and then they got relegated so you know now they're kind of going back to their roots i guess but yeah they did do well against a very good premier league side in brighton yeah it's funny isn't it we're now going to these teams as the ones that are better and we should be winning and it's weird because we've never really i mean i say we've never really in the last couple of years we have but i still find it a little bit surreal sometimes i'm like okay we expect to win we must win we're going to a championship team and it's embarrassing if we lose, and that's the situation we're in. So it's um it's a, it's a crazy transition, but mm. we seem going to get to the FA Cup um, a lot, don't we, Ryan? Before we do that, yeah, last year was the same day as my birthday. Actually, I think it, yeah. it was the one that broke the curse. Remember, we were like, oh my god, mm. we actually won on my birthday. <laughs> but that was the FA Cup. Ferguson didn't count. scored. Um, but I'm going even further back. Than that, Ryan. It still doesn't really feel like it counts. But we back, further back than that. Were we in the Champions League one? I think we were in the Championship. Maybe it was our first season in the Champ. There's a really horrendous picture of me at Stoke Away on Facebook somewhere in the archives with my Justin Bieber haircut. Could be right. I think it was maybe first season in the champ. Normally I'd remember this remember. sort of thing. I think, did we lose 3-1 maybe? I remember Sunderland at home. I remember Sunderland at home. I just, I'll have a quick Google. Stoke, but you probably could be right. Yeah, have a look. I mean, you're probably right. I remember for certain Sunderland because I remember they were probably one of the bigger Premier League clubs to come down at that time. I think Mikel Smith scored and we won 1-0, if I'm right in saying. That was first season Prem. Uh, sorry, Championship. Um, but yeah, on to Estupinian just while we were here. Um, it's a it's a great goal. I mean, and I mean a great goal. I mean, in the way it's come about is in a situation where we're obviously not playing very well. And he scored a goal like that. So many people can say it's easy. It's easier to score a worldie like against Tottenham when you're 4-0 up or going into 4-0 up. Whereas when you do it, when you're at 1-0 down away from home, literally a couple of minutes before end of the first half, it's a, it's a great strike, Ben. But does it beat the Spurs goal from last week? It doesn't, but it is very close. It was an it was a very, very good finish. Um, it's just so good having him back. But um, no, I don't answer your question. I don't think it does. It, no, it doesn't do better than the one against Tottenham. Speaking of Tottenham, did you see Pedro Poros? I don't think that was probably close closer to being better than Purvis's one. But that was an unbelievable goal yeah. by Pedro Porro. He obviously took a leaf out of the, um, the Pedro Porro but... one. It, it it's not as aesthetically pleasing as the Stupinian first goal, but I think the Stupinian second goal, because of the way he's hit it and the way it's gone into the back of the net near post. I mean, there's 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 a fraction of the goal you're aiming for there, so you have to hit it spot on, which he did, and the way that he's got so much power behind it. In my opinion, from a half volley with such a small amount of margin to aim for, in my opinion, it's a, it's a better goal because I think it's a more difficult goal to score. I think you'd probably be more likely to hit that one into Rose Ed than you would be the other one when you've got a bit more time to think about it and you cut across That's goal. That's a good point. I think to go yeah. near post um, on the half volley was a difficult one. But Ben, did yeah, you find it if we the played stuff? The techniques... The um, the techniques uh... Oh yeah, sorry, I did. But yeah, the technique, I agree, is probably a lot harder for the goal he scored against Stoke. Um, I did, sorry. Um, mm. 2011, February, I think it was, when we played them at the Bet365 and it was 3-0 to Stoke. I, I feel like I do remember that now you say it, to be fair. 
Mm. I feel like I do. I just I would need to see the game and I'd be like, oh yeah, 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 I remember that game. <laughs> I but yeah, Bet three six five or Britannia. Looked, I mean, oh yeah, it was it was the Britannia back then. Britannia yeah. still. Mm. It, in my opinion, I always still call it the Britannia. Weirdly, but I don't know. But yeah, Purvis deserves his flowers, mate. Fantastic performance today. Um, further proof as to what De Zerbi said in the presser last yesterday, even was that he is the best left back in the league. Or you'd, you'd struggle to find many other left backs in the world, is what he said. Then Purvis, um, and he's probably right, Ben, isn't he? Sorry, I was on mute. I'm still stuck in this 2011 Stoke Stoke game. I can't get over it. Can I just quickly go through the goal scorers of that? Um, sorry to the listeners for keep going back and forth this 2011 game, but it's in my mind now. Um, Ryan, this is going to blow your mind. So in the 14th minute, John Carew scored for Stoke. And then in the 22nd minute, Jonathan Walters scored. And then just before half-time, Ryan Shawcross scored as well. And that was the 3-0 game. Done. Some great names there. Uh, what Some was your question? Names. Ryan Shawcross. I was once told that Ryan Shawcross, and not even that long ago, was better than Lewis Dunk. Um and that Lewis was a clumsy Ryan Shawcross, what I was once told. Where is he now? Yeah, that that's a very funny comparison. But um my question, Ben, was I don't remember now. Because you've just you've you, you Something about you've boxed my being brain the best three fullback. times in the room. I've now forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I think Deserby said something along the lines of that in the world right now. He said that there's you'd struggle to find many left backs better than him in the world right now. Um do you agree with him? Yeah, I would. You would struggle, I think. I mean, I'm to try it now. I think maybe right back. If you're saying full backs, so there are definitely maybe some better right backs. Left, but left, in terms left, of just left, left. strictly left, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm struggling, so I, I must be agreeing with Deserby. I can't really think of any. Um, let us know in the comments of another one classic. But um, even in the Prem, like, who's the best? I'm calling out my friend the other day who's a United fan. I'm calling him out on, on air because we, we had a heated debate downstairs the other day of Luke Shaw being better than Esther Pinyan, which is just absolutely outrageous, mate. It's not true. It's not true. That's I'm f- here to tell you right now that it's not true because my opinion is the one that matters the most, obviously. But that just, it, that, it just doesn't make any sense to me. I'm sorry. That's a disgraceful show. I'm not swapping Esther Pinyan for sure. Honks, doesn't it? So, yeah. No, let us know in the comments if, if you want to. Esther Pinyan, name me three left backs that are better than him. And if you say Mark Kukure, you're getting blocked and you're not allowed to watch a single single <laughs> social podcast episode ever again. Right. Do you not see they were looking for half, another left back, on this. Chelsea? Sorry, before we go back to the game. I'm not surprised. They're probably, mate, they're probably going to go just spend 70 million on a Stupinian and I'd, I'd probably reject it, to be honest, at 70. Um, mm. But yeah, let's go on to second half because I don't want to talk about Please. price tags of our players. It's just <laughs> that's boring. So we played a lot better now. Um, they brought on that tricky winger. I can't remember the guy's name now. Um, he, he looked pretty useful, though, uh, for the first sort of five, ten minutes. I thought they were, you know, really changing the game that they actually, to be fair, probably should have taken a couple more chances there. But I think at some point, it's funny with these sort of games, quality shines through. Um, and I think that's what we did. We just turned it up a notch. Uh, João Pedro, particularly. Per, uh, Jan Paul van Hecker, obviously, with the with the, one of the final, it was the final goal. Um, yeah. but Danny Welbeck made a big difference in the second half as well it's worth noting um, Ben how how pleased were you sort of with João Pedro's performance because it was so much more improved I think off that left side um, obviously alongside with Purvis as well which obviously helps is so much better maybe the Matoma injury for him has been a bit of a blessing yeah I think we've always said it as well that he well I mean I know I have ever since that Athens game where he couldn't hold the ball up for for the life of him I really don't see him as a number nine. I thought that he can play better as a 10 or even on the wing. And yeah, he's definitely so much better on the wing. Um, and yeah, obviously it is championship, uh, championship opposition, but at the same time, he still had a very good performance and kind of, kind of I wouldn't say carried us, but made the second half a lot more easier for us for sure. But yeah, he's a quality, quality player. And I'm hating these links of him being linked with moves away already is an absolute joke. He's just signed yeah. here for fuck's sake. Mm. Yeah, it is draining, isn't it? I mean, if 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 Xiao Pedro's out there watching this, I mean, are you bored of it, Xiao? Like, is it just a bit? Does it just, for players? Does it not just get a bit draining to see your name linked everywhere, especially as Brighton player? Like, you just you've just joined here, and I'd say in the last two months, he's just really finding his feet as that talisman that we've been crying out for for so long. Um, and he's 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 exactly that. And today was exact proof of that. 
Um, it was obviously Pascal Gross, wasn't it? With yet another assist, by the way. Um, I don't. I was struggling to count many goals in recent times where Jao Pe- sorry, not Jao Pedro, where Pascal Gross hasn't got an assist. Obviously, it was Lewis Dunk with the first one. Then he got it with the Jao Pedro header. Both brilliant headers, by the way. I don't. I could. Could you tell me apart from obviously a Stupinian bangers where Pascal Gross hasn't assisted a goal? I generally don't think you can. I think <clears throat> if you looked at our goals this season, percentage wise, I'm gonna say he's probably involved with like 75 percent of them it feels that way anyway a goals and assists obviously including but yeah he's always involved and it comes back to that same thing as like when he when he's gone we will feel it we will 100 percent feel it unless we replace him well of course but um yeah he's the worst can't describe yeah. how incredible that bloke is for us he's like our little de bruyne isn't he and he 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 can create something out of just nothing. And normally the pass is brilliant. I mean, that that chip that he did across for Dunk's goal is almost identical to the one that I think it was Welbeck scored, almost identical to the one that it was Hinchwood scored. It's it's a similar move nearly every time. It's the, it's the gross turn, if you like, where he cuts back across and he whips it either left or right. It doesn't really matter. And it's it's such a good move. Like, he, it's unstoppable. It's so... I'm I'm surprised, but like defenders don't do their homework. I mean, they probably do on that sort of move, but it seems to work every single time anyway, which just shows how good he is at it. A bit like when Iron Robin was cut onto his left side, defenders know he's going to do it, but he's so good at it that they still can't prepare for it, and he they get done by it every single time. Um, but yeah, it just goes to show mm. the player that Pascal Gross is. Mm. And I think it's worth noting this third goal um, because this is the one. Obviously, after a penalty, so many times we've gone to a club. You know, lower than us at the time. I'm not going to disrespect Stoke by any stretch because there was once upon a time we were playing Stoke and they were better than us and it wasn't that long ago. Um, but going to Stoke away, a team that's below us by quite a margin and obviously we're so far up in the table, it's, it's the sort of thing I've seen so many times as a Brighton fan where we would just capitulate. We would concede again, we would get that, that second kick. You know, you go 2-1, then we tend to sort of fall away don't we when it goes to two all we you know you'd expect the the pressure to start mounting from them their crowd you'd thought would probably have done a little bit more to get them into the game but they, they didn't have didn't enough really. of a crowd um, to help them get back into the game to be honest <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's me not disrespecting stoke then but, ben just comes out with they didn't have a crowd but no it's sort of true but is their championship attendance much better than that i'm pretty sure it is like why do they not go surely. to that game why did what what else what else is there to no, do in watch- stoke Stoke games on a Saturday. What else, other than leave the city <laughs> I, to go somewhere else? I I, I don't I don't know <laughs> Stoke, um, but I I do know that it wasn't a great turnout, and I do know that they should have done more to capitalise on us. To be honest, because um, I thought we were a little bit shaky after that second, and, and leading into the second, as I say, they they were there and doing a good job. And to be honest, I actually do give them a lot of respect for how they how they played against us. They. They did go at us quite a lot, and considering where they are in the table, it's you know they, this new manager they've got in Schumacher is obviously doing a good job there. Um, I think you can see that. Um, mm. But we'll move on to that third goal, as I say, because this is the bit that I did actually. Th- this is the sort of goal that we'd normally concede, and this is why I liked it so much because it was the sort of goal where Gross has created something out of nothing, and it's such a good header from Pedro. And it's all, the all-round play has been great to lead up to it. Ben, I don't know about you, but the amount of times where we concede a goal like that, it it felt nice to be the ones that are doing it to someone and being that ruthless and being like, no, we're we're not here to mess around. We're going to win this game. No, that's a good point. Yeah, that's fair. Even the other the, the last goal as well, we feel like we would normally get hit on the counter like that, just a a kind of tapping goal that sort of thing. But no, no, I definitely agree. Um, it is nice to be on the other end of it, but. I know we skipped over it. Lewis Baker obviously scored the penalty for Stoke. Shout out to him. Friends of him on Facebook since I was like 11 because he used to be a Chelsea Academy player. And so I added him on Facebook. No way. I knew he was yeah. Chelsea Academy, but like your friends, yeah. with, what, I don't know your, your actual mates, you went for a coffee last week, is it? I know. Yeah, exactly. Really know him well. I always go to Stoke to see him, but I don't know why because obviously I'm not a Chelsea fan. Um, so I don't know why. I think he was just had a really good potential on FIFA one year and I thought that's pretty cool. So I got yeah sorry obviously all Brighton fans the Chelsea fun. fans are hot um, so I think that's why because yeah, it's a United thing fun. but yeah just wanted just wanted to shout out Lewis Baker but yeah going back to your question Ryan yes 
um, it is nice to score those sorts of goals instead of conceding them because they are very frustrating to concede. Mm. I'll give credit to Lewis Baker. Yeah, the the whole knee injury thing. It must be tough. I thought I thought that he was going to come off on it first half again, uh, which would have been horrible for him. But um, yeah, no credit to him. It was a good penalty. To be fair, the way he sort of smashed it into that bottom left is a, a, a great way to take a penalty. Just hit it as hard as you can. Uh, is there is there a case there for Verbruggen? Perhaps I mean not not for the penalty itself, but just in general, maybe they're firing a lot of shots at him. He gave, nearly gave the ball away a couple of times again. Is he one that just needs time, Ben? He's, you know, he's so young, obviously. Uh, but you can see why perhaps that deserve the ops for still in the league and just, you know, wants to integrate the Bruggen slowly. Cause Do you think he does? He is mistake prone at the moment. Do you think Steel is now more number one than it, that it's not 50-50 anymore? You think it's more like 75-25? That's a fantastic question. I'm so glad you mentioned because it's kind of I like got a quote from De Zerbe yesterday. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah, good. I'm um, talking about exactly that. Um, and this is what he said. This is an exclusive on Seagull Social because I haven't put this out yet, actually. But um, So I asked him about this as to why he's picking Steel. And he said, Jason's a great player. In build-up, he's better than Bart for now. Um, as his technical ability is better. I'm lucky to have these two players. The credit is of the both goalkeeper coaches. Um, they're both great. For it, sometimes you have to accept some mistakes and build up. And in our style, we have to defend in our style. But, you know, for example, the amount of times you make mistakes, we have to just... <laughs> I'm trying to translate it because he, he, he can be quite... We just have to accept English, it, basically. But yes, <laughs> we have to defend our style. We have to accept our mistakes. And he says, when we play our style, it's very easy to accept and love our style, but we have to accept our bad moments too. So... Uh, I suppose it's a case of just giving Bart time and, and, and relying on Jason in the league then. Yeah, I guess so. Which is a bit unfortunate because when when will that change? You hope it's going to be soon because Bart is the younger goalkeeper and probably the more valuable one and the one that will be playing for us for a lot longer than Jason Steele would, you would imagine. So in my brain, I'm thinking, obviously for the here and now, you want to put the best goalkeeper out and I completely understand that. But eventually... Bart is going to need a lot more game time to be able to maximise his potential and get, yeah, kind of get to the levels that Deserby wants him to be at. That's true, but I don't think that alone would be a good move for him at the moment. No, I don't, I don't. think that that would be the right move. I think keeping him in and around the squad, getting the old game here and there is, is actually a good thing in that. Um, but it is difficult because you want to give these players the amount of time, as he said with. Mo Dahoud, uh, which is a good time to mention the whole Dahoud situation. Um, not similar. Literally, um, where similar Dahoud, where Dahoud, where Dahoud at? Where the hell is Dahoud at? <laughs> um, it's, it's similar but different in that, you know, obviously Dahoud is... You'd say, as I said on the podcast last week, I, I, I haven't seen it yet and I'm struggling to see it um, in him. I, I, and I want to be wrong and I really hope that he does go on and prove me wrong. But I think this line of where he said to us uh, in the in the end, we're competing at the first level of football and you need time. But sometimes football to, can't give you that time. I mean, he said that he's already spoken to him a lot of times. He expects more from him in terms of quality, in terms of personality, energy, enthusiasm. He said he's been very clear with him. I mean, these are big words. I mean, obviously, he's literally this, he, he is a, completely a torn manager. to who a whole new arsehole there. Because a lot of those things you've listed are what makes up a human being and footballer. You've literally listed everything. Well, it's it's characteristic. a whole footballer, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And he's That's not it. doing so anything. It's right. different to obviously. No, well, he's not, is he? And that's that's the horrible bit, and I, I think that's the thing with the the Bart Verbruggen situation is I, I think everyone can see that he's a good goalkeeper. He will be there one day. Dahoud, he, he's had his time in being the youngster. He was the young wonder kid in in Dortmund, and you know, struggled with injuries there. Comes over here. You can see bits and pieces where he potentially could be good. I mean, he's got a decent passing range, obviously very skillful, but is he cut out for Premier League football, Ben? I think he is, maybe in the wrong team, potentially. Um, just for um, for what we need here and now, for sure, definitely. I think we spoke about in the last episode that he needs, we, we need someone defensive to play alongside him because he hasn't got the physicality to do that on his own, really. To play with Pascal Gross, that just yeah. be, yeah, that'd be curtains. But, um, there's de- yeah, there's definitely a player there. I don't know if, this, and again, I'm going to say something, but I don't know if this has just come out because of the whole to who thing. And I've, over the past few weeks, it's been a bit of a conversation, but I saw a few things or heard a few things that his personality isn't the best. I know Deserby mentioned it there, but I obviously don't want to slate him for something that I don't know. And again, it's just a rumor, but 
people have said that or heard things that he actually isn't his personality isn't the best if that makes sense without being too blunt yeah i won't dig you out on it because i'm not going to bother asking you the questions on air but um yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know Dahoud, so I don't know him. Um, so I don't, I've never met the guy. I've never actually even Just seen him. Rumors, to be fair, way. around the training ground. So, um, yeah, no, I'm not blaming you, mate. So, um, but yeah, it's an interesting situation, nonetheless. I, I, I don't. It's a very rare situation for us because we don't normally get ourselves into this. Normally, you know, we've had Aaron Connolly, perhaps, where you know he's he's not really made it like we thought he would. But I struggle to think of many where they've come in in recent years and they haven't hit the ground running. Um, or yeah. at least turned into a good or where they've got the personality wrong as it's, well it's, it's, I don't yeah. want to focus on this too much but because mm. I know we have this Paul Barber thing no, 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 like we, no, don't, course, course, we, we don't hire any we don't hire any dickheads which is probably why we didn't get Kudus I imagine because he, I think he has a bit of an yeah, ego yeah, potential yeah. and Cole very Palmer, good player, obviously yeah, apparently he's, he's got Palmer. a bit of an ego on him maybe Smith Rowe does as well because I thought that would be quite a good signing for us and doesn't seem to be mm. coming of anything to be honest but um, yeah that's probably the last thing on the Dahoot thing but um Hopefully, for Brighton, for his sake, he does manage to pull things around and maybe show show his class yeah, because we all know he is a good player. Hmm, I agree, and I think it's, it's it's a good thing, isn't it? Really, what the club has here because I mean, you can see today as a, as a good example. This it's a team that wants to win. As I said, with that Jao Pedro goal, and it, it brings on nicely to the to the fourth. You know, Van Hecker, he, he's he's a good guy. Obviously, he's, he's a very motivated guy, apparently very liked around everywhere. Um, and you can see it. And he wants to win for the for the team. That driving run forward, Ben, was as good as a running centre-back that I've ever seen, to be honest. And made even better by the Alexis McAllister-esque ball across to Di Maria in the World Cup final. <laughs> it ended up being Jao Pedro against Stoke City in the third round of the FA Cup. But nonetheless, it was a fantastic goal, Ben. That was very good. Um yeah, I think every Brighton fan, when they saw him sprinting there, probably said, what the Van Hecker, but um, ting. Um, but yeah, he, he he done pretty well. It was a very good ball. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Um, and yeah, it's just, it was a good goal to wrap up the game, to be honest. And also, like I said earlier in the episode, the fact that he did get that own goal, and he's kind of made up for it by assisting someone else. So yeah, hats off to him. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, Van Hecker... <laughs> after the moment in the first half it's always that situation as a, as a defender you, you're either going to capitulate and fall to bits or you're going to end up redeeming yourself later in the game and that's exactly what Van Hecker did today and it's, it speaks to the volume of, of his character and that's that's the point that we're making here is you know that, that character that you want that, that will to get better to win to be just a good person as the Zerbi said so many times if you're a good person You'll get good things, and that's what he believes in, and that's his that's his philosophy. Um, perhaps that's that's what we're avoiding with other players. I don't know, but yeah, very good to see. Um, should have been more, um, to be honest. We could have gone five. Danny Welbeck, um, I thought had a great game by the way when he came on, as always, seemingly. Um, should have scored though. He has been very um, good. That, recently, that, that sort of, yeah, he just levels, isn't he? I think that's 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 it with Danny. You you see. A, a, you you can tell when someone's got quality amongst the rest, and I think Welbeck's one of them. He comes on, and you can just mm. tell he's got it. You know, I reckon. Yeah, if he's you, so reliable. If you had him down the wreck somewhere, and you're playing football, yeah, exactly. If you had a kick about him down the wreck down there, and you're you're having a little kick about him, I, I, he would look absolutely ridiculous because that's 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 what I'm trying to say. That the levels of different players, regardless of what they've whether they've flopped at different clubs, is that that's that's how way you know a true footballer is. I think. Mm. it's interesting that it's time for Brighton he's kind of gone from that <clears throat> people kind of compared him to being a bit like a donkey didn't they um, to, whereas to now and I'm sure he did have this ability before Brighton as well he's a lot more silkier now isn't he I think maybe that's, ha- that's come with age and maybe working with a lot better managers and being surrounded by better players but he's so much more silkier now than compared to the Danny Welbeck donkey type player that he maybe was every now and then at the beginning of his time at Brighton but it's also a confidence thing. I mean, do you yeah, remember true. when we had Cashman on the uh, podcast a while ago and he said that Welbeck in training was just like an absolute joke. He would he would always say like you would mm. be by far and wide. It's him and Alana, wasn't watch. it? They were incredible. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah. And I can imagine it because, you know, although he gets stick or whatever, but I don't I don't really see it at all, to be honest. I, 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 see, I must be watching a different Danny Welbeck. And I think Sir Alex Ferguson said 
similar, didn't he? When he was in the United Academy coming out about him being one of the most talented players in that academy and being one of the most talented footballers. Just a shame about the injuries because he could have been such a good player. But yeah, luckily he's reaping the rewards here. He's been very good for us in the last three or four years. But um, OK, um, I think we've pretty much covered. Oh, it's good to mention as well, Jack Hinchy getting on his first uh, first game for us and uh, Cam Poopy on as well. Um, good to see. Uh, hopefully we have a, boy. a couple more academy graduates. Yeah, it's good to see though, isn't it? I mean, Pubion was yeah. recalled from his Cheltenham loan, wasn't he? Um, potentially either he's he's in the shop window for another loan, Ben, or he's or he's here to yeah, stay for so. perhaps the end of the season. No, I think it would be a similar story to Sarmiento. And I guess uh, would you say Ayari's one? Is he was he not getting the look in at Coventry? Because I know he's changed clubs very quickly. He's gone to Blackburn now, hasn't he? Yeah, I think he sort of struggled at Coventry. Um, Blackburn, obviously, we've got a good relationship with. Yeah. You see that video yeah, that's on their Twitter. So <laughs> that was really good. That's good, wasn't it? Yeah. No, I like I like the way we've dealt with some clubs. Like, you know, Blackburn have been good to us and we've been good to them. I think mm. it's good that you've got that relationship because you can sort of trust the players will almost go from home to home, wouldn't they? So that's a good thing, I suppose, for us. But um, hopefully, Yari, because we can see it in him, can't we? Yeah, I think he'll be okay eventually. Just he scored an absolute weldy, didn't he? To the English game. in the season. Yeah, what, the one that smacked him off the face or something like that, was it? Or, or he hit him? I can't remember what it was. <laughs> oh, no, I swear he actually did score. I swear he did score a worldie. Am I getting? Am I remembering it because someone put what a worldie I think by Ayari? you're remembering it because, yeah. I'm pretty yeah, sure I put on there saying absolutely world-class goal by Ayari. <laughs> I think it smacked him off the off the post or something. And yeah. um, oh, I think, I, right. mate, it's people fell for it. This is how dumb people are. Like, people was like, oh, right, well, how cheers, do you mate. think that's a good goal? I was like, mate, you had to be there. You had to be there. Um, but yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah. Um, cool. I think we're done in terms of games. Injuries. Stuff, I think we've mentioned. Yeah, injuries. Um, Shock. Obviously, we've got. So let's, let's go through who's back in the, the five to six week bracket. And does Irby couldn't confirm whether that's going to be for the first team, whether that's going to be training, he couldn't actually say because he doesn't know himself. So if, if the Zerbi doesn't know, then we certainly don't. Um, but from what he's been told by his medics is that five to six weeks on uh, Karimatoma, Simon Odingra, Julio and Ciso, and Ansu Fati. Um, so there's four absolutely massive, massive players for us, Ben. I mean, these are names that are game I just want to see in Ciso you know, play again, mate. I just want to see in Ciso. Mitoma, Fati, Adingra, and Cesar, like these are big game players. Yeah. These are players that could play top level. Wasn't Cesar's last game Wolves away? That's a hell of a long time ago. Yeah, you might. Mm, that second game of the season. You might wasn't be it? right. I remember. <clears throat> I think Marches was definitely. Uh, actually, I think you're right. No, Marches was City, and then yeah, that was that was Wolves. I think. I think you're right in saying. Because um, you've done it in training, didn't but yeah, you, afterwards. We'll hope for the best. <clears throat> yeah. So we hope we hope that they're all coming back in a month's time, but we don't know. Someday. I don't think anyone really knows, to be honest. But um we we've done our injury roundup from what we've been told, and that's as much as probably you you and me both know living sitting at home. But um okay, Ben. I think that's just about everything. In the next round of the FA Cup, is there any wants? Would you want a a lower side or do you want a, a bigger team to get them out of the way with or you don't really care I, the thing about the FA Cup I love playing teams that you don't normally play I think it really frustrates me when you get a Premier League team and you're a Premier League team um, yeah, even when I play football manager and you think off oh, entering the fourth round first game and you get given Man City and you're thinking for fuck's sake like my objective here is to have a little cup run from Tony Bloom but I can't even do that because I'm going to get battered by City so it would be nice to get another another team maybe Ipswich could be quite nice so we can build a relationship with Kieran McKenna even more that could be quite nice do you, do you would you like to go on this cup run this year then Ben you, you know obviously Deserby's taking it seriously which oh, comes to somewhat of a surprise but do you want to go on another one or, or not or, you know would you rather focus on Europa League and it's just and so many games mate take on a third so competition many. So many games, so many injuries we've already got. It would just be a bit more. Well, I mean, you can't, you can't give up, can you? So, the best, the best you can do is play your best and try your best at every single game. Which Potter's Eve, always did, mate. Does. We just got knocked out. Yeah, do you remember against Sheffield Wednesday uh, at oh, home? I think we lost one yeah. nil, and it was a game that we literally tried to lose. Like it was the most unwatchable thing. Was it? Did Adam um, Reach score for them? Was it Adam Reach? 
Yeah, yeah, I think it was. Yeah, and I remember yeah. Mope threw the ball at someone's head once, and <laughs> almost like he wanted to get sent off. Um, it was really a really weird game. Right, yeah, literally, cool. like you know when you walk out of a game and you're like, what a waste of time that was, and that was literally one of those. I mean, it was. Um, I remember watching them FA Cup games of Hutton with 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 Potter. We just wanted to get knocked out. We just wanted to focus on the league, but um, yeah. I think Deserve is a bit different to that. I think we'll be going for everything. Um, just looking okay, through ben, some of the pictures everything. today quickly, yeah, Ryan, so I can tell you what teams are left uh, lower level wise. Um, Maidstone, Maid- Maidstone, yeah, they beat Stevenage one nil. Well, so fair play to them. Yeah. Uh, anyone else need Sutton there? League two though, aren't they? So they're not. Eastly, are oh, they drew? So they'll be going to a replay. Uh, and currently, as we're doing this, Sheffield, Sheffield Wednesday beating Cardiff, Borough Villa nil nil, Chelsea Preston nil. Chelsea haven't scored against Preston. It's twenty seventh minute. That's shocking. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. They're going to lose. I don't know what I Sunday games are like. That would be incredible for loads of reasons. Let's play we're Wrexham. Preston, we? Wrexham or. Uh, yeah, Wrexham or who's the first one I said Ipswich? Those we played nice. Wrexham a while ago, didn't we? In the FA Cup, if I remember, and they they held us to a replay, didn't they? What are we talking nineties or are you talking early two thousands? <laughs> no, no, two thousand and twelve, probably. I'd say. I remember the holding us to a replay, and I remember, yeah, yeah, second season champ, maybe first season. Oh, fair. Um. See, random games, mate. This is what the FA Cup does. It reminds it's you of Stoke of in 2011. Cup. It reminds me of Wrexham in 2012. It's magic, mate. So I would like, personally, not too low because I always feel like a, a <clears throat> Maidstone or something away would just beat us. Um, but I would, I would quite fancy, no, they wouldn't. Like, if there's any championship, championship league one teams, I, I don't mind that. Um, Premier League, I agree, it's boring because we play them every day. And it's just annoying, really. So, yeah, I'd quite like it. A championship team. Or I genuinely think we're too good like to slip up, slip up on banana skins now. Like, like you said, if we lost to Maidstone, maybe a few years ago we would have. I think we're better than <laughs> we're too good for that now. Like, even our third team should be able to do that, and the football we play as well should get us past Maidstone. No Mate, if we played Maidstone, I'd want Steel, a Stupinian, <laughs> Dunk, Van Hecker. Like, I'd want the full lot against them. I would not want to take Deserve a single chance. Well. If we got a chance in the first minute, score it. If we get another one, score it. Yeah, like I would Ruthless. take uh, like no mercy then, mate. Because honestly, I just don't trust it. Don't trust it. But uh, do you remember? I think it was um, Pep City against Rotherham, and I think that he put the literal full side of City out and beat them eight <laughs> 0 just to make sure that they didn't. Move. <laughs> um, yeah, that's the sort of thing I want to see. <laughs> um, all right, I think we're done here, Ben. Um, yeah. Good to see you. We'll speak again Thanks. soon, I'm sure. Uh, who's next? Um, oh, we've got a big bit, the winter break now, haven't we? Which is which is quite nice. Wolves yeah, after the restart. Um, 22nd of January, got a bit of a wait now. Yeah, so Monday night. A couple night of weeks off. Uh, I'm sure we'll probably love to see a home game back at the Amex. Um, I'm, a, nice I'm in the West to, Upper for that. Maybe one. get a different one, piece of content in, Ben, next week. Oh god, I can't get away then half time. That's, that's a pain. If I right. stand in my seat for a bit, then I might get away with it. Um no I'm joking, maybe I'll see you at half time, mate. But um yeah, <clears throat> let's <throat> let's make a plan and I wanna hear some thoughts in the comments because I don't want to hear any any trying to escape in this from Ben and Maz and I'm gonna put him under the spotlight here. <clears throat> Think of a different sort of video that we could do next week because it's a break and there's nothing going on, um, in terms of football anyway. And I want us to do a different sort of video. Um, I don't know what it is. I want to hear some thoughts in the comments and I want to see what people think because I want to see what you want to see from us. That Because obviously there's no Brighton on. and there's, Otherwise, we just leave the account dead for a week. What's the point? We can easily get another couple of thousand views. We might, ben well, gets a break. Um, That's the point. It's a winter break for Ben as well, not just the players. <clears throat> how boring is that? How boring is that? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, anyways, let us know in the comments. We'll see you soon. We'll see you before... Uh, all of the craziness against Wolves. Ben, thank you for joining me, mate. Make sure you follow all of our socials, like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you very, very soon. And goodbye. Peace.